Now our job is to illustrate some of the ways in which martial nonviolence, which when it's put into a curriculum for a group of people is called peace practices, how martial nonviolence is practiced in a sitting down, no punches thrown, more relaxed, sometimes kind of environment. So we have chairs. What if you were to imagine all conflict is an opportunity to train? So not only does this person want something different from what I want, which is the usual um, experience of human beings, but they are also my training partner, whether they realize it or not. In the same way that someone would find themselves in an Aikido demonstration, should they jump on you in the street, uh, someone who comes at you with an attack of some kind would find themselves in a demonstration about conflict done well. My conviction is, and my experience is, that they get on board with that project really fast when they realize that what you want is to help everybody involved get what they want, what they need, and that you won't be discouraged from that regardless of how exciting things become. So last week, we went through an exercise in which you uh, told us the story of a conflict that you had been in, and I suggested tactical options, ways of thinking about it. Um, the first and more, most important thing in our work together is that we start thinking about it as training. There are tactical options, there are choices you make and choices you don't make. They work out, they don't work out. And you gauge that so that you can adjust, so you get better at the process, rather than focusing on whether you won or lost that particular argument. The conflict is not with an individual attacker. They think that it is, but they're mistaken. The conflict is with conflict done poorly, and the job is to get better at it every time you engage with someone. So, if you were to take your finger or point at my face and say you as an example of an attack that's totally generic, would you mind doing it? You. My immediate response is my breath goes in, my head lifts up, and my body gets tense. If instead I engage a forward motion that this makes very unlikely if you're not thinking about it on purpose, and I engage with the floor and I get myself ready to become better at whatever we're doing and to find out what that is, I've already started something that's a very different experience from this followed by this, which is the, the standard response. So, I'm getting out of the way intellectually, emotionally, without actually moving my body. If I were moving my body, it would look like this. You. I'm now standing behind you. That would be really weird in a regular social context, but that's the feeling of what we're looking for. And so, what that movement would be if we were standing up is I would ask the person, and person A says, you. Person B would say, tell me more. So, here we go. You. Tell me more. It's abstract. It's generic. We're not actually engaging in a conflict. We're preparing for a conflict so that when someone really does say something that, come, that strikes us to the heart, we will have had the physical experience of engaging our breath, engaging with the person as though it were training, so that that's what our body does under pressure, rather than just kind of wanting it to be that way. Okay, will you say, you are profoundly underprepared and point at me? <laughs> it's one of the things I hate the most. You are profoundly underprepared. Tell me more. I could also say, what do you mean? Or, I'd like to know more. In which way this time, if I'm feeling comic? I, I, feel, I feel a bit underprepared. Which way have you noticed? What are we talking about? Which project that we work on together do you feel that I'm not prepared for? That kind of thing. It brings more out. Does that make sense? Okay. You ready for a turn? So your job is to think about what tactics you would normally deploy, or let's think of what anybody would normally deploy in a sitcom, on TV, and then you can try that one out. And then you can try one that is generic. It's just the one that you practice, and it might sound weird, but it is at least not the one that everybody always does. So, always does the generic, one that gets you into the process of, oh yeah, this is training, and then one that might actually apply to what's being said. You ready? <coughs> sure. You have no idea what you're doing. Probably right. Is that what everybody would do? No. Okay, what would what would the sitcom what would the sitcom actor say? You have no idea what you're doing. What do you mean I don't know what I'm doing? But, and which is a great example of the words being the same. What do you mean by you, 
I don't know what I'm doing. But said in that way, it's an accusation that actually suggests that I don't have any idea what I'm asking about. It's a counter accusation, it's this. But the words changed slightly could be one of our examples. So I'm saying it again, and when you change the tone of what you said, as though this were an acting class, because what we do after we work on the martial part of it is that we include improvisation um, so that it becomes more natural and real, and then we go into uh, mass improvisation, which is effectively group facilitation. So, you have no idea what you're doing. What do you mean? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, that was sliding to the side and getting out of the way of the accusation. Now, practice saying it so that it is actually an invitation for the person to say what they need, rather than a deflection or uh, shoving it back in their face. I find this very difficult, something that I have to practice regularly, because my ego gets involved, and I want to show them that they can't push me around, instead of simply not being pushed around. You have no idea what you're doing. Well, can you tell me what you think I don't know what I'm doing about? <laughs> did, you, did you get how that was calling into question? Whether that I had any idea what I was talking about when I was calling into question? Uh, yeah, not that I hear it again, yeah. <laughs> the simpler, simpler is better. Let's try it one more time. And this is an exploration process. It's not a question of being right or wrong. It's, oh, I noticed that the result of having said it that way would be X. Uh, and someone else can give you feedback about what they, what they are thinking about. You have no idea what you're doing. Which is why, which is why the generic response is the second step, rather than jumping right on to. Ooh, I'm hearing alarming things. We set an alarm so we would know when we were almost out of time. <laughs> Truth of that doesn't. Um, so. Step one, saying the normal thing that a sitcom actor would say. Kind of one and a half, you went through several other options, all of which in the end are variations of, I'm out of, I, I'm, I'm getting out of here, I'm telling you you're wrong, stuff like that, which everybody does, including me. And then the option two that I'm hoping to go to more quickly is saying the generic thing that seems a little odd because it's scripted, but gets you in the right zone. So if it tell me more. And then the third version would be something like Tell Me More that is entirely washed of the push and pull of the usual kind of conflict. So we're looking for the thing that's actually applicable to the situation, what I'm actually saying, but has the feel of Tell Me More in that even, available voice, whatever that will be for you. So they really would be like, oh, really? And they tell you more. Because even if you don't agree with them, even if you never agree with them, and all you're interested in is tactical advantage, which I don't recommend, but if all you're interested in is you still want to know precisely what they mean so you know how to account for it in your planning for the future. So rather than resisting them, which is also a problem in Aikido, try to push them away or make them wrong, absolutely let them receive them and let them come all the way through to which they'll have to say what they need. And until they've done that, you don't have the information you need to make a strategy that will be likely to succeed. You have absolutely no idea what you're doing. Well, I appreciate your opinion. Can you tell me more about what you think I'm not doing? Okay. Right, don't Did you have, was that a dodge? Well, I appreciate your opinion. Uh, well, no, I was trying to let them know that <laughs> the only way I ask that question, not to say you're wrong, but to say you would only know for sure by their reaction how they interpreted it. So one of the most important things is to be here and now and really getting what their body is telling you about what they really believe. Because they will inevitably give you signals by going with their face or looking away or crossing their arms or whatever. Their body will give you some signal about what they really believe about what you said. And I found that I have to respect your opinion is a way of telling someone they're wrong. That's how it feels to me a lot of the time. Well, I respect your opinion, but, especially there's a but after that. And so the question becomes, will you tell me, because we need to kind of move to the end of it, will you tell me 
that I'm absolutely wrong and let me have a shot at uh, a response. You absolutely don't know what you're doing. That is hard to hear. Will you tell me what I don't know? See? Choked. Try again. Take a look at me. You don't know what you're doing. That's hard to hear. Will you tell me what you mean? I mean. Uh, closer that time. There's no right answer. There's the best answer at the moment. And the way I found to get to that, actually when you're in motion, is to have a basic practice that gets you in the mindset of, oh yeah, this is practice, that involves your body, is somatic. And then to have a scripted option that is something you can say when you can't figure out what to say, even if it feels a little weird, makes you know what? Then you can actually work with being in motion. It's the same way of practicing martial arts, that you deal with yourself, your, your structure, you get your, your partner gives you time to figure that out, and then they grab onto you in a way that gives you a challenge, but still allows you to find your structure, and you do both of those way before anybody really tries to do harm to you, you don't really hurt you or move you around or anything. So you have stair steps to it. Uh, we should probably stop. Uh, and if you have questions, please check in with us. You can visit us at peacepractices.org, or you can send uh, an email to us at administration, at abcglobal.net, which is the nonprofit that supports this work. And again, thank you for your attention.